Each year, millions of people visit tall structures such as the CN Tower and Burj Khalifa to marvel at their impressive size. Both of these structures represent amazing feats of engineering that pushed the boundaries of what was possible at the time of their respective constructions. The Burj Khalifa is about 276.5 meters taller than the CN Tower, which is the equivalent of stacking Shaquille O'Neal 126 times on top of the CN Tower. Currently, the Burj Khalifa holds the title of the world's tallest freestanding structure, a title that the CN Tower held for 32 years until it was overtaken by the Burj Khalifa in 2007. Although these two structures have a vast difference in height, they share one key design aspect. Take a closer look at them. What similarity do you see? I'll give you a minute. Okay, minutes up. Did you get it? You might have noticed that they're both oddly Y-shaped, and in today's video, we'll be going over why. Designing tall structures is no easy feat as there are many challenges, especially if there are multiple use cases for the structure. The main challenges designers face are designing for lateral loads like wind and seismic, and accommodating different mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems within the structure itself. The unique Y-shape mainly serves to redirect wind flow, save material, and improve aesthetics. The Y-shape is an irregular shape that will disrupt how wind loads are distributed on the structure, and this is a very important design feature we'll go over in a bit. Wind loading is one of the most important loading conditions to consider for high-rise structures in addition to seismic loads. If you're interested in learning a bit about the seismic loading, check out my blog post linked below. There are three main factors that amplify winds in urban cities, downwashing, corner vortex, and funneling. Professor Abo Shosha, a structural engineering professor at Ryerson University, gives a great explanation of these three effects in his interview with CBC News, which we linked in the description. It should be noted that generally these effects will have the greatest impact on the ground level wind, however, will also increase the wind speeds for high rise structures in certain circumstances. In addition to these factors, there's also something called the urban wind island effect that increases the winds in urban areas. To keep things simple, let's take a look at a general formula for wind force from the engineering toolbox. Based on this formula, we can come to the simple conclusion that if a structure has a larger surface area, it will experience a higher wind force, all other factors remaining constant. Hence, taller structures generally have larger surface areas relative to other structures and will experience higher wind forces. As I mentioned earlier, the irregular Y-shape disrupts how wind loads are distributed on the structure. To understand this geometry, we must first understand the role that natural frequency plays in structural design. Natural frequency is the frequency at which a system tends to oscillate in the absence of any driving or damping force. Almost every single object has its own natural frequency. For example, if you push a child on a swing, they'll swing back and forth at a certain frequency and won't stop unless an external force like friction stops them. Just like the child on the swing, tower has its own natural frequency at which it oscillates when it's pushed. In fluid dynamics, a vortex is defined as a region in a fluid in which the flow revolves around an axis line. In real life, we see vortices appear as tornadoes or whirlpools. A fluid may refer to either a liquid or a gas, and in the case of wind loading, a type of flow called vortex shedding contributes to the formation of vortices on the backside of a body. Vortex shedding is a phenomenon that occurs when wind passes a structural member and vortices are shed alternatively from one side to the other. This shedding creates alternating low pressure zones on the backside of the body and causes the member to oscillate perpendicular to the direction of the wind flow. Now the problem with vortex shunning is that it will promote oscillation in structures such as the CN Tower and Burj Khalifa. In the event that this oscillation matches the structure's natural frequency, another phenomenon known as resonance will greatly intensify the effect of wind loads on the structure, which is very bad for stability and can lead to structural failure. A famous example of a structure whose failure was hypothesized to be due to the combination of resonance and vortex shedding was the Tacoma Narrow Bridge Collapse in 1940. So going back to why the Y shape is so useful, it's because it's an irregular shape that will disrupt the formation of large wind vortices on the backside of the structures. Although wind vortices will continue to form, they'll be in much smaller pockets and reduce the likelihood of them creating an oscillation that's aligned with the structure's natural frequency. Overall, this is a very simplified explanation of the wind loading effects on tall structures. If you'd like to learn more, I'd recommend giving an academic paper written recently by Sanyal and Kumar in 2012. This paper concluded that the aerodynamic performance of a tall structure can be significantly improved by providing different shape modifications such as a Y-shaped building. In summary, winds in urban areas are typically higher than in suburban or rural areas due to multiple factors including downwashing, corner vortex, funneling, and the urban wind island effect. On top of this, designing for wind loads is incredibly important in tall structural design because of the implications of resonance and wind shedding. 
Thanks for getting to the end of the video. I know this one was a bit more technical than the last one, but I hope you learned something new. Let me know in the comments below what sort of videos you'd like to see next. As always, be sure to subscribe to Structure Simplify and check out our social channels for more simple and engaging infotainment content on the construction processes behind structures.